Hello photography fans, and welcome to my dark room. Today we're gonna be mixing some chemistry. I just got this um, C41 press kit. So I'm going to mix it up to develop some color, uh, C41 color film. I got this camera off of eBay and it came with this roll of exposed Coda Color VRG 100 film. I wonder what's on this roll. It was probably half shot, so I re it and I hope there's some interesting pictures. Now, from what I've learned, the VGR was produced in about 1980s, so I'll hopefully some interesting pictures on this film, if any. But in order to process this, I need some C41 chemistry. Now, C41 chemistry is rather interesting when you mix it up. First of all, you use hot water at around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Why are we using Fahrenheit anyways? Uh, so it's rather warm, and when you mix the Blix portion of it, which is like, kind of like fixer, bleach fix, that causes all this uh, chemical reaction, it starts bubbling and foaming, so you don't want to be doing like in your kitchen, because like your wife or mom will just kick you out right away. You want to be doing that probably in like a laundry sink or in a bathroom, but be careful, that thing foams like crazy. Make sure you wear gloves which I will be wearing. So let me move this camera and above the sink and you guys can see what I'm talking about. So today we're mixing a Jobo C41 press kit. Now they call it press kit I guess because press photographers would take it to their hotel rooms and mix it up. It was rather quick versus using all the full-blown C41 chemistry. We're using rather condensed version of it. So, what I have in my sink is a plastic container which I'm going to use to measure out the amount of water, a thermometer, of course I'm wearing my gloves. Now ventilation is important, I don't have ventilation here, but if you have a way of working this outside, even better. I'm going to start with the least interesting chemical and build up to the most interesting one which is the Blix. The Blix is interesting for two reasons. When you mix it, it foams, it creates this chemical reaction. But it also has this terrible smell of rotten eggs, and it also has um, this interesting iodine color, which if you spill over the place, you're basically done. With uh, both developing and, um, yeah, with the stuff that you spilled it on. So, the stabilizer is the last chemical that you pour, uh, that you dip your film in, into after it's developed, washed and all the good stuff happens. So you mix it with um, 1000 milliliters of room temperature water. What does it mean to have room temperature water is about 72 degrees in normal room. My room is about 70. So let me pour 1000 milliliters. For that I'll use this uh, measuring beaker which is basically spray bottle with the cut off top so I call it a beaker. So I'm going to start with 500. So we got 500 mil. Pour another 500. Right. Put this aside. Let me take the the content of this little envelope. Looks kind of like some kind of uh, controlled substance, but it's not. It's just a stabilizer. So, no worries. Pour that in into the trash. 
And then use some kind of mixing thing. I'm using my developing thongs. No problem. I'll just wash them. And just, just mix, mix until it's thoroughly incorporated. And no traces of stuff is remaining in the washer. Now this one, this one I like it. It dissolves rather quickly, so no worries there. Now, the worst chemical to to mix, in my humble opinion, humble opinion, is a Kodak Dectal. Now that sucker is so hard to incorporate. It's not even funny. It always has some little fuzziness left over. So now I'm using my trusted. Um, funnel, and I'm going to pour that chemical into the bottle called the, or labeled stabilizer. No. No, these are quart bottles. Quart is. Uh, not really one liter. Quart is like 946, 950 mil. But this bottle can easily accommodate one liter because the scale only goes to a quart, but the bottle itself can take a liter. So now that our stabilizer is done, we're gonna go ahead and develop, um, make some developer color developer. Now, in order to do that, we first want to maybe clean off our stuff. You want kosher chemicals, you don't want to be mixing them with other nonsense. Let's take a quick rinse. And now for the, for the developer, we need to run our water at roughly 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now each press kit comes with this nifty little um, instructions. So in case you don't want to watch this video or you are in a hotel room and trying to develop some C41, you, uh, you can use this. So it's 43 and a half degrees Celsius. That's a more scientific method of measuring. So 44 degrees. So 110 degrees, room water, 800 millimeter of it. And then you just dump the content of your pouch labeled developer one liter so this is a one liter kit there are two liter kits as well so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna run me some hot water 110 degrees beautiful so what I want to do is pour some into my bottle pour some into my other container to warm it up and now around 800 ml of that stuff. Alright, got yeah, 800 mil. So I'm gonna pour this out, pop this in here, and I'm gonna take the content off my developer pouch. Use the scissors, cut it open, and Dump it in. Well, I could have done a better job opening this, but it will do. It's basically like mixing or make, baking um, um, your favorite powder cake thing that like you buy it stored and you mix it and then some kind of cake comes out. So you'll notice while you're mixing this and you're using your thongs with like rubber coating, or rubber ends, or you're using your gloves to mix, or preferably some maybe glass rod, you're not using your bare hands, you notice how slippery this thing becomes. It's almost like uh, with its developer. So it pretty much resembles any developer's slippiness. And you mix it, mix it, mix it until it's all well incorporated. See, now I sound like a pro, 800 mil. But what you want is 800 milliliters. So you take your bottle, pop you thoroughly cleaned it, washed it, rinsed it, pop your funnel, and you transfer that into the, into the bottle 
label developed it. Now, I'm still missing 200 milliliters, so I'm going to pour that into my other beaker. Beautiful. So that did two things. They cleaned my beaker from previous water, which I guess didn't need to be cleaned. But I did it. Wiped my bottle so it's nice and clean. And put it away. Now the funnest chemical of them all. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the nastiest chemical of them all? Whoa! The developer is, but there's one nasty chemical called the Blix. Yep, the Blix. Let's read on Blix. The Blix. Place 800 milliliters of water at 110 degrees Fahrenheit into clean glass or plastic container. While stirring, add the content of the packet marked Blix A. Follow with Blix B. Stir well. Add water to make 1000 milliliter. Adding Blix powder to water creates endothermic reaction as it goes into solution. So, what you're about to witness is endothermic reaction. Alright, so let's start with same thing. 800 milliliters of 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius water. Okay, let's verify the temperature so it's not over hot or not too hot. So what we'll do, we'll pour it into another container and let it cool just slightly. So I'm going to pause and wait until this thing reaches about 110 degrees. So while waiting for our water to come down in temperature, still about 117 degrees. All right, so my temperature is uh, around 115. I'm gonna give it a good mix. And I'm gonna get my Blix and stuff ready. So we're gonna start with Blix number eight. Blix eight. Okay, get my scissors. I'll put this baby up. Off the bin you go. So all you see here is just really nice white powder. Again, with the white powder. Just pour it into your... When you pour it, you notice not much is happening. You stir it a little bit. becomes this little milky mixture. But now the fun part starts. You add this Blix B. Now one day I want to order MSDS sheets for this and see what this thing is actually all about. Now this one is quite yellowish. Looks kind of like uh, some kind of seasoning for steaks. But you definitely don't want to be seasoning your steaks with it. So let me Oh, smells so bad. I'm gonna use my t-shirt as a mask and then you just dump it in and look what happens. You see that? It starts going a little crazy. It starts bubbling up. So if you use container just big enough to contain it, it will spill over. It will create a big mess. And this thing stinks, man. So you mix it until it's all well incorporated. And now it has this beautiful iodine color. Well, you don't drink it. Make sure you don't drink this stuff. I know it looks good, but you don't drink it. Now, I don't know how um, true this is, but I heard that if you are exposed to some of these chemicals, the only way to counteract this is to drink some beer. Now, I am not planning on getting in contact with these chemicals, but I am definitely uh, holding a bottle of beer next to me just to be sure in case something were to happen, I have that percussion ready. So once this all stops bubbling and sizzling, Um, yeah, I'm gonna just pour it into my 
bottle named Blix. Blix stands for Blix and Fix, Bleach and Fix. So my funnel was thoroughly cleaned. Now I'm going to take this iodine color mixture. Oh, any doctors watching out there? It looks like the stuff that you pour on patients or you smear patients with prior to surgery. So I don't know if they use C41 kit in case they run out of iodine, but I don't know. Not a doctor. Alright, so you put your chemicals, you take this cap, and you close it. And you take the little towel up, and you smear it real clean. Now my C41 kit is well mixed up. So what I'm going to do now, let it sit for a little bit while I wash up the, the sink and the instruments. And that will be it. Now the chemicals for the C41 process are, are obviously reusable. Uh, the instruction says you can develop about 8 rolls of your 35 standard 35 millimeter film. Now I've ran about 10 rolls of 120 through it, which I guess is some equivalent. But it still works. You want to dump it maybe after like six months. You don't want to keep it longer. Let's say you have this important roll of color film and you want to run it and stuff goes wrong. So you don't want to do that. For the price of $27 every six months and some stink in your house, it's not a terrible price to pay. Now that said, my chemistry is still hot. So I'm going to try to run that 35 and see what's on it. If it's something interesting, I'll make a video. If not, then I'll just not make a video. As a precautionary step, I decided to intake about 300 milliliters of this um, beverage, counteract the effect that Blix might have on my body. Now, I'm sure this will help, as this will definitely get rid of all the nasty chemistry from your body. So, after running the raw film through C41 process, turns out basically no images. So, back to uh, my health measures to counteract the, the, the blicks. Alright, now that's for sure. Until next time.